Good morning, brethren, sisters in Church of the Living God. Hi, good morning. <clears throat> Get your authorized version of the scriptures and turn in the authorized version of the scriptures to Romans chapter 10. Follow me along. Follow me along in the scriptures, word by word, verse by verse. Follow along, okay? Romans chapter 10, verses 14 on to verse 17. These easy believism Roman Catholic Jesuit coadjutor twits like to say that uh, those who preach the true gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ, that you come to him broken and contrite, and in the fear of the Lord, you call upon the name of the Lord. You ask him for, your, for his mercy upon you. And that comes from you coming to him on his terms, broken and contrite, which all these easy believism, Jesuit coadjutor devils that they are, skip over. And just like Jesuits like to change the meanings of words and redefine definitions. Okay? So, one of their big arguments is they don't deal with Romans chapter 10, verse 14. <laughs> See, you devils. You're counting on lost people's ignorance of Scripture. And also these so-called Christians who live by their feelings and not the Scriptures. Those are the types that you target because that is the majority when the church of the living God is the minority. Okay? Your audience is great, you devils. Yes. Yes, it is. And just like Shakespeare says, you dance and fret your stuff upon the stage just for a moment to be heard no more. It is the tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. So, Romans chapter 10, verses 14 on to verse 17. Follow me along. Told you so, brother. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Oh, see, right there, right there, right there. It says believe. It says believe. It's just believe. Sh 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 shut up. Sh shut up. Let's continue. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not believed? heard. Oh. And how shall they hear without a preacher? See, verse 14 is addressing those who are sent to preach. You know, ministers of reconciliation, ambassadors having the word of reconciliation. Okay? Let's continue. <clears throat> and how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. See, these devils, they say, peace, peace, and there is no peace. They, they want to convince these people, these people who fall for easy believism, to be at peace with their sins because they are confident in the fact that they just believe the facts without any brokenness or contrition. They just believe in the facts. <clears throat> that way, these coadjutor devils who preach this garbage of easy believism, right, that they're making these people who believe that to have peace with their sin. 
Because God's grace covers it, covers it all, right? You don't need to change life because uh, you just believe, therefore it doesn't matter, right? Sick devils. Verse 16. But they have not all obeyed, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah, Isaiah, saith, Lord, who hath believed our report. And that is from Isaiah chapter 53. Okay. So then faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Okay. So see, from verses 14 on to verse 17, you devil twits. It's talking about those. It's addressing those who are sent okay and if you are saved born again converted of the church of the living God you are an ambassador of Jesus Christ given the ministry of reconciliation with the word of reconciliation okay but the times that we are living in right now people's hearts are <laughs> Far more hardened today than they have been heretofore. Isn't it true? And opportunities to be witnesses are lessening. The door ain't closed yet. But again, it is closing. It is closing. People don't want to hear. They want to have their ears tickled, itched, see. Go to Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. We will be reading verses 12 on to verse 20. Again, follow me along in the scriptures. Don't, don't look at me. Look in the scriptures, okay? Philippians chapter 1. Verses 12 on to verse 20. But I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. Nothing happens by accident. Again, people, if you believe in coincidence, you have some issues, okay? Coincidences do not exist. Things just don't voila, happen without reasons, okay? Coincidences do not exist. How do you know, brother, sister, the things that are going on in your life right now, present, wherever you are, whatever circumstances may be happening, number one, are they a result and consequence of your sin? That's something you really have to consider. But number two, if to your recollection and the Lord has not shown you to the scripture or anything like that, but yet these things such as with Job are happening unto you, hmm, why would that be perhaps? Why would that be perhaps? But I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. Have you ever considered that there might be circumstances that come upon you that through the way you behave, the way you align your life with the scriptures may give a loud testimony unto those who may see it? You ever consider that? Or are you looking for the dazzle and the lights and the glitter and the glamour and all these things to be seen of? But not but yet it might be the little thing of putting you through a ringer, boy. So that you through adhering your life according to the scriptures they give a great witness on that through your adherence onto the scriptures, your living through the scriptures, will give a visible witness onto those who will see. You know, 
speaking without saying anything. Because what do you do when someone doesn't want to hear anything? See? Let's continue. So that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in and in all other places. See, Paul, by speaking and preaching the gospel, well known and reached many, but also what he did and how he did as a prisoner, especially in the book of Acts with the Philippian jailer, okay, who was going to kill himself, okay, and all those other prisoners, how Paul and Silas reacted, how they behaved themselves in prison, see. Okay? They sung hymns and stuff like that. Yes, yes, they did. Yes, they did. But the way they handled it as the church of the living God, see? You got to keep these things in mind, brethren. Let's continue. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. See, if those of the church of the living God, those who are uh, young in the faith, those who have problems with witnessing, problems meaning they're a skirt. And amen. Don't have confidence in yourself. Abbott, no, 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 no. Do not have confidence in you. What, what, you have confidence in the scriptures upon our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, who will lead you and guide you. Okay? Him you have confidence on. Yes. In any situation. You know? Not yourself. Not yourself. Who knows if the Lord has engineered your circumstance, brother, to give a testimony without necessarily speaking much. Because people don't want to hear right now, do they? Do they? No. No. You'll talk about the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll see some people right in front of you. Do they roll their eyes? And it's like, uh, you know what? No thanks, man. I don't want to hear this. Ever have that happen to you before, huh? Let's continue, though. But see, again, people see those who are of the church of the living God, witnesses to see how you react in certain situations. And if there is one there, a brother, who might see you in whatever circumstance that might be, or hear of your affairs, of things that are happening to you, you get the point. You get the point. You get the point. Let's continue. Now, verse 15. Some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife. Don't worry, we'll, we'll talk about this. And some also of goodwill. The one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. Verses 15 and 16. Some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds. What does this mean? Let me give you a really good example of this. Go to Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, verses 16 on to verse 24. Acts chapter 16, verses 16 on to verse 24. Now look at me. Look in the scriptures. Come on, man. Acts 16, verses 16 on to verse 24. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel, possessed with a spirit of divination, met us, a divining, a spirit of divination, Okay, our Lord speaks highly against 
divination. So the spirit of divination is not of the Lord. Rather, the little G God of this world. Okay? Which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying, having, uh, having men's persons in admiration for advantage. Okay? The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, these men are the servants of the Most High God, which shew unto us the way of salvation. Now, was that the truth right there? Yes, it was. Yes, this damsel with the spirit of divination was actually saying the truth. See, in Philippians there, it's not, for example, some might say, well, these easy believism heretics, they're preaching, number one, another Jesus and another gospel. So some of you might be, well, at least they're preaching Christ. Well, no, they're not preaching the true Christ of the scriptures. They're not preaching the true gospel of today in this dispensation. Okay? They are preaching another Jesus, another gospel. But see, what Paul is talking about, picture it as this, okay? You got some lost guy who hears the true gospel about the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. How you are to come to him, broken and contrite, and in the fear of the Lord. And in the fear of the Lord, you call out for his mercy. You call upon his name, okay? It's actually very simple. But see, you got a lost guy who hears that. And he's going to use that in whatever capacity he is, using the truth as a weapon to condemn the person who is speaking it, see. So actually speaking the true gospel and the true Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, but yet, number one, not of the church of the living God. Number two, using it be, uh, as a weapon to turn it back onto the messenger, see. See, someone who is lost is like, this This guy, this guy, look at what he's saying, okay? He's saying this guy went to a cross because of what you and I did to him, okay? And he died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. We can't see him, but we're supposed to be come to him broken of our own self-righteousness, have sorrow because it's our fault that he went there, and be afraid of him, and in that fear we're supposed to call upon the name of the Lord? That's crazy! That's what they say. See, they will use that kind of a premise, what Paul is addressing there in Philippians, okay? It's not like what these devils are doing today. No, no, no. They are preaching another Jesus, another gospel, okay? But what Paul is addressing is when someone takes the truth and yet uses it as a weapon to attack the messenger, see? That's what he's talking about. This is a perfect example because this woman... This damsel, excuse me, that had a spirit of divination? These men are the servants of the Most High God. Of course, that was the truth. Which shew unto us the way of salvation. Which was the truth, is the truth, yes. These easy believism devils. They are not the servants of the Most High God. And they do not shew unto you the way of salvation. They don't. They speak smooth things unto you. They prophesy deceits. They get you out of the way. They cease the Holy One. They make the Holy One of Israel to cease before you. While all the while putting on a facade. You easy believism devils. It, go along, little boys. This is your time. Bravo. One day. And there are, see, there are some of these devils that know this, which makes them even far more dangerous. One day you're going to pay for this. You're going to pay. And what will you do in the end thereof, devil? All of you. Let's continue. Verse 18. In Acts chapter 16. 
and this did she many days. But Paul, but Paul being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, turned and said to the spirit, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, remember, Ephesians 6, 12. Always at least remember the address, Ephesians 6, 12, okay. I command thee, in the name of Jesus Christ, to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. I rebuke you, devil. No, no. I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. Now with, go back, hold your place here. Okay, look in Philippians, okay. Look at, Phil, uh, back to Philippians chapter one. Verse 18. What then? Notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense, like the damsel with the, uh, with the spirit of divination, or in truth, Christ is preached. And I therein rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. Okay? Because of what we have already discussed. See, this spirit of divination that was in this damsel was telling the actual truth. These easy believism devils, they ain't telling the actual truth. They're, again, they're preaching another Jesus and another gospel. Okay? So we cannot, as the church of the living God, say, well, hey, these easy believers and devils, at least they're preaching. No, 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 no. No. Paul is talking about those who take the truth and try to turn it into foolishness onto those who will hear while attacking the messenger. Which is what these easy believers and devils and the Jesuit coadjutors that majority of them are, do. Now let's continue in Acts chapter 16. From verse 19. And when her masters saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace onto the rulers and brought them to the magistrate, saying, these men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city. Kind of like Jeremiah, who was preaching the truth to the people of the Jews at the time when he was around, okay? Repent, okay? Judgment is coming. You can't escape it. But the severity of that judgment that you are going to face, that can be altered. That can. Judgment is coming. Jeremiah preached what? Submit yourself unto the devastation that's coming. Submit yourself unto the king of Babylon and go out to them. But no, they didn't. They didn't do that, did they? No. They wanted to hear, fight, fight, fight. Didn't they? Yes. Okay? Okay? So, in the same way, they're saying, these men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city. Whereas the Jews back then in Jeremiah's time kept saying of Jeremiah, this guy deserves to die because he's weakening the hands of the people of war. He's saying judgment and pending doom is coming. Get right so your uh, the judgment won't be so severe. Okay? Do you get it? All right? Do you get it? Let's continue. Verse 21, and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans, being pagan heathens. Okay? And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them, and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. So when the hope of their 
gains was taken away, in the pretense of truth, in pretense, these men, verse 20, these men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans, being Romans, pagans. And these people were who were practicing soothsaying, being Romans, pagans, get it? You, you get this, right? I, I know you do. I know you do, right? Very good example of this. Now go back to Philippians chapter 1. Okay? Verse 19. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. According to my earnest expectation and my hope, that in nothing I shall be in that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. Okay? Now faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. But when people don't want to hear, instead of trying to browbeat them with the scriptures and force a word in there, okay? Because God's word is like a hammer that breaketh in pieces and cutteth uh, asunder the marrow, the bones, and the spirit. Hebrews, 4, chap uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Remember that one always as well, okay? But when people don't want anything to do with it, How are you living? What are they seeing? Brad, you've talked about this. Did, where's your head at, brother, sister? Where, where's your head at? I'm going to keep reminding you of this, boy. The further we go, the closer the catching away, the redemption of the purchased possession becomes, the more imperative it is for us of the church of the living God to stay the course, to fight the good fight of faith. Do you understand? And I'm supposed to tell you that. Now, skipping a little bit, go to verse 27 in Philippians chapter 1. Okay? Beg your pardon, brother. Verses 27 on to the close of the chapter. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. See, a lot of people can speak the right thing, but how do they live? Okay? What testimony are you giving by the way you live? And that, again, not just when people see. What about the four walls? Hmm? In that glass house you live in when the Lord's looking down upon you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. And in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. What does that mean? 
Brethren, have you ever been out and about wherever it is you are? And you, you, you're standing there by someone and they get kind of apprehensive of you. And you, you look at them it's like, hey, what's happening, man? And they're like, huh, huh. Talking to you, of course, of the Church of the Living God. Because, see, of the Church of the Living God, those of you who are saved, born again, converted, you're sealed until the day of redemption. You have the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, living within you. Okay? So, what does that mean? Uh, 1 John 4, uh, 1 John chapter 4, one verse. 1 John chapter 4. What does that mean? <laughs> Oh, it means just because you can utter something proves you're saved. Just shut up. Shut up. Yeah, you can say whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How you living, yeah. <laughs> you devil. Uh, 1 John 4, verse 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Who is in you? Church of the living God. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? The Lord is that spirit. The comforter. Okay? That seal. The Holy Ghost. The Lord. He lives within you. Okay? And because he lives within you, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. There are a lot of channels out there, and I'm going to name a couple of these channels. And don't get all full of yourself there, buddy. Um, call for an uprising. This uh, logic before authority, okay? This that weirdo Bible box flock box, okay? Just those three to uh, for an example. These guys have a plethora of subscribers, and they are very popular. Those who are of the Church of the Living God. Are very, we're very small. The true scriptures that we align our lives to, the true gospel that the church of the living God preaches unto the lost is not one that is favorable, is not one welcomable unto the lost people. But no, get a gospel that says, just believe. Just believe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, what we as the Church of the Living God say, through the Scriptures, through the Holy Ghost that liveth within us, prophesying, speaking the truth from the Scriptures. Okay? If you were to read uh, 1 John 4, verses 1 on to verse 6, it's very plain. Okay? Very plain. Okay? But see, those who are of the world, oh, they get a lot of people flocking to them, don't they? Because also, too, remember, people like, lost people especially, they like strife. They like debate. Bad press sells. Look at the algorithms uh, here on YouTube. For example... Put in Brian Denlinger. Now, granted, Brother Brian, he quit YouTube and he's doing his own thing. Praise the Lord for that. That he's doing his own thing off of YouTube. Praise the Lord. Lord led him and is guiding him in the way he would have him to go. Okay? Okay? You understand? Okay? But, okay, you put Brian Denlinger's name in there. Look at all the attack videos that come up. Okay? People love that. Lost people love that. Okay? <laughs> the world is the mob. Conjure magic for them, and they shall be distracted. Take away their freedom. 
and instill their war, the Jesuits will give them death. And they will love them for it. <laughs> and that's a quote from a Hollywood movie that I have never forgotten, and it's so appropriate, actually. Which could be twisted into many several ways. <laughs> but people love to, to hear the negative. And guess what, brother, sister? The true gospel is negative. Oh, yeah, because it breaks you that you come to the Lord broken, sorrowful, and fearful. Let's see. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. Oh yeah, we're all sinners. Just, just, just believe. You're saved now. Just believe. Uh, sh sh shouldn't I be? Ah, don't worry about it. You're going to heaven. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, you, you should do certain things. But hey, it doesn't matter because you're saved. Because you just believe. You're a good person, remember? <laughs> yeah. And then the redemption of the purchase possession comes. Yeah. So the perdition going forth, conquering to conquer. Goes into the rebuilt temple. I'm God, looking like the Catholic Jesus Christ. Then comes along that mark of the beast. But it says, if any man... Ah, don't worry about it, remember? You just believe. You're sealed. What about all those other guys that disappeared? Oh, those were the heretics. Yeah. 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 The aliens came and destroyed them. <laughs> right? <laughs> Who knows what the Jesuits are going to do with all this alien tomfoolery? Who knows? But, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't, wouldn't that surprise me, you know? The uh, catching away happens, and then we're up there looking down, and we see the Jesuits say that the aliens did something like that. Who knows? Who knows? But see, you preach something about you just believe. Yeah, we're all bad people. Yeah, but you just believe, man. <sighs> they are of the world, therefore speak they of the world. And the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. That's quite plain, wouldn't you say? Now go back to Philippians chapter 1. Verse 28 again. Oh, excuse me. And in nothing terrified by your adversaries. Who are these adversaries? I ain't going to give you what you want. There are adversaries. Are those of the world. Those who are of Satan, Lucifer. They are Roman Catholic, Jesuit coadjutors, easy believism heretics, Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, okay, Methodics, or excuse me, uh, Methodics, excuse me, Methodics, <laughs> excuse me for that saying, Methodics, Lutherics, okay. <laughs> And the list goes on and on. They are of the world. Forgive me for that uh, mispronunciation, by the way. Uh, method, uh, Methylix is what I meant to say. Yeah, beg your pardon. Those are our adversaries. Our adversaries are those who are against the scriptures and preach another Jesus and another gospel. And in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of position, perdition, but to you of salvation and, and that of God. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, 
but also to suffer for his sake. Having the same conflict which he saw in me, and now here to be in me. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verses 8 on to verse 16. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 8 on to verse 16. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David, seed of David, meaning in the line of kings, not the actual physical, okay? He, our Lord Jesus Christ is the king of the Jews, okay? So of the seed of David, meaning, meaning as king, okay? Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised up from the dead according to my gospel. Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds. But the word of God is not bound. The word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect sakes. Again, this is not that Calvinistic garbage. No, no. You're saved, born again, converted. The election is of the church of the living God. Okay? I have a video talking about that, uh, Calvinism. If I can remember, I'll try to put it in the link in this uh, video. I, some, I forget some links to put in some videos quite often. <laughs> okay, I do, so beg your pardon. But check out, if I don't remember, check out the video on Calvinism about being a elect or non-elect, okay? And we go through it, so. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, dead to this world, okay, we shall also live with him. Hold your place here. Go to Galatians. Galatians. Chapter 2, verse 20 and 21, of course. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Yeah. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And because he loved you and gave himself for you, it's okay to live like the world yeah, it's okay to curse. It's okay to watch television. It's okay to listen to devil music. It's okay to go ahead and get stabbed because you're concerned about other people. Yeah. 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 Who's the ones who really cheapen the grace of God? Those of the church of the living God or those of you devil coadjutors? See, you know the answer to that. Well, that's why you guys are so adamant against the truth. You are beguiling unstable souls. The Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you all, you devils. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, something that he did, then Christ is dead in vain. Isn't that interesting? Go back to 2 Timothy chapter 2. If we, uh, picking up at verse 12, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Deny him. You could uh, account to uh, Peter, who at that time when he denied Christ three times, beg your pardon, he was not saved. Okay, because the perfect Atonement for sin had yet to uh, happen, okay? That was before the crucifixion. 
Yes, you could attribute that kind of denial, but what's another way of denying the Lord? Not living your life according to the scripture, dear friend. Saying one thing and living another. Taking the name of the Lord Jesus Christ upon your lips, but in works you deny him. Works. Not to save yourself, you devil twit. No. See, remember, we are saved, born again, converted, ministers of reconciliation, ambassadors, you know, having the word of reconciliation, okay? We are to live according to the standard. You don't do that. You're denying him. We're going to check some of you today. beginning with the sinner who is chief. Verse 13, if we, <laughs> I love this, I love this. If we believe not, he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. See, a, a brother sent me a link to this, um, off-grid guy. His last name was Lake. And I'm pray um I cannot remember. Uh, a dear a beloved brother sent me a link for this. And um that guy, his his name was Lake, he had faith in his faith, but not faith on the Lord. See, that's what it's metaphysical mind science, very similar to Mary Baker Eddy. Okay, and the law of attraction, the secret, which is the religion <laughs> of Joel Osteen. Believe it, achieve it. See, see, brethren, people, these easy believism heretics, they are telling you to have faith in your faith, just like the prosperity preachers, just like Mary Baker Eddy. Christian science, just like the law of attraction, it's satanic. No, our faith is on a person. A person is what? A spirit, soul, and body. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Jason, you do not have faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. You have said it yourself. You have faith in your faith. Your faith needs to be on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if you're having faith in your faith, I have faith in my faith. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. Hold your place here. 2 Corinthians. Second Corinthians. All oh, right, where was that? Where was that? Uh, verse nine and ten. But we had uh, Second Corinthians chapter one, verses nine and ten. Beg your pardon. But we had the sentence sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves but in God, which raiseth the dead. Who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver us, and doth deliver, excuse me. Aha, aha, see brother? Okay. Who delivered us from so great, who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust, that he will yet deliver us. Paul never preached having faith in your own faith. No, our faith is on a person, a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Our faith is on the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Not on ourselves in our belief. 
Okay? And it's not in the call either. The calling upon the name of the Lord, people, it, it, it just happens when you come to the Lord, broken of your self-righteousness, contrite, sorrowful. It's your fault that he died. And the fear of the Lord. See, those three things, but it's one event. That fear is going to drive you to your knees because if he don't have mercy on you, you're going to hell, okay? You realize that you put him there, and after you are given the grasp through the scriptures what he did for you, it's, Lord, have mercy on me. Save me. It just happens. But they are of the world. Therefore, the world heareth them. And it says here in verse 13, he cannot deny himself. He cannot deny himself. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. Number one, this is written to who? Church of the living God. Okay? What is this talking about then? If you don't believe he's going to do something specific? Hmm? You don't believe that you have been forgiven? Hmm? It's not, this verse 13 is not talking about a belief that's attributed unto salvation. It's trust in what he has done and will do. That he never, that his seed never is begging bread. That whether you live or die, you're the Lord's. And if you're absent from the body, you're present with the Lord. Let me ask you this. We know that the redemption of the purchased possession is going to happen one day. Do you sometimes have doubts? I don't know if it's going to happen while I'm alive. Or you're having a low moment. How could I be saved and think this way? How can I be saved and speak this way? How could I be saved and do the things that they do? If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. Of these things, put them in remembrance charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. And what are we, what are we, what are we going to read up here to verse 16? Okay. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed Rightly dividing the word of truth. That doesn't mean the Book of Mormons either. Rightly dividing the word of truth, the scriptures. The scriptures are for you, but it's not all written to you. You have to rightly divide this book. Dispensational, okay? That's the beginning of heresy. Not rightly dividing the word of truth. Mystery Babylon the Great and all her daughters. Okay. But shun profane and vain blah, 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 babblings. For they will increase unto more ungodliness. And about this babblings, go to Genesis. I am using a set of scriptures, uh, a Schofield set of scriptures. This one is um, has larger print, even though I got glasses. Okay, go to Genesis. 
The Oxford movement, by the way, has nothing to do with the 1917 edition of the Schofield reference scriptures. Okay? It's the modern Schofield study Bibles that alter the text of the scripture. Okay? Go to Genesis. Genesis chapter 11. <clears throat> Verses 5 on to verse 9. And the Lord came down to see, and the Lord came at. Ah, see, brother, we're working on it. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men builded. You know, like Catholicism is doing, bringing everybody together that we all be one. When our Lord is a God of distinction and separation, people. Ugh. Okay. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Oh, like make designer babies. Yeah, creating babies in a lab, creating fake vitamins, synthetic vitamin A, synthetic vitamin B12, which is pretty much identical, but there's a little tint or tink in there with some of these synthetic vitamins. You can be taking a supplement, so-called, that's vitamin C. But is it natural vitamin C or synthetic vitamin C? Think about that. Think about that. Okay? Go to. Let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. They are of the world, therefore the world heareth them. Hmm. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Left off. God did not destroy it. Therefore the name of it is called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of the earth. And again, and again. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, likes, wants to bring everyone together. The Lord our God, our Father Jesus Christ, separation. What do you think holy means? Separate than, other than. They are of the world, therefore the world hears them. We are of God. Those who are of God hears us. Okay, back to 2 Timothy. Where did we leave off before that little web of trail, okay? We ended up at uh, verse 16 in 2 Timothy chapter 2. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And now go to, um, oh, go down to verses 23 on to verse 26. 23 on to verse 26 in 2 Timothy chapter 2. Okay? But foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they do gender strifes. We are told in the scriptures, in the Pauline epistles, not to be bothered about with genealogies. If you're getting involved in genealogies and questioning whether or not someone is an actual Jew or not, you're being diverted. 
okay? You need to be very, very, very careful with that, okay? See, because when you start going and questioning whether one is of this kindred or not, that kindred, which in turn uh, questions the legitimacy of, say, someone who is of a Jew, who is of Israel, okay, you're, you're running in, you're, you're treading on very dangerous ground there, okay, be careful with that, because remember, there are many out there who are claiming to be Jews, and they are not, okay, for example, Hamites, who say that they are the true Jews, uh, you're of Ham. Uh, the Jew is of Shem. Okay? You cannot be the true Jews. <laughs> it's impossible. You're of Ham, not of Shem. Okay? But also, remember, they say they are Jews and they are not. That's in the book of Revelation. Okay? The church has replaced Israel. So, those of the church... And, when, and who says that? Mystery Babylon the Great. Roman Catholicism and all her daughters. Okay? Replacing the Jew with themselves. Aha! They say they are Jews, but they are not. They're not openly saying we're Jews like the Hamites who claim that they are the true Jews. Okay? Your descendants are from Ham. Not Shem. Okay? It's the tent of Shem. It's Shem's tent. Okay? The Asiatics. Not the Hamites. Not the, those of Japheth. Okay? No. It's Shem, the Jew. Okay? Verse 23. Thank you, part for that. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they do gender strifes. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. Gentle. Again, that means don't take the scriptures and bludgeon them over the head all at once. Give them little morsels, little morsels. And the gentleness is not talking about what the modern Christians in these church buildings do who don't judge anything. It's like, we're not going to judge you. We're not going to tell you about your sin. We don't want to scare you off because we want your money. See, no, no. That's not the gentleness that he's referring to. We as the church of the living God... Unless you get broken of your self-righteousness, unless the Lord break you and you have contrition, okay? Fear the Lord, okay? Unless you repent of yourself, guess what? You're going to hell. You're going to hell. Unless you come to the Lord on his terms. Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Unless you come to him on your on his terms, not your own, you're going to hell, buddy. Brad, that's not being gentle. Um, that's showing love. Being not gentle with me going up to someone off on the on the street, which I I am guilty of this. I have done this before, and you just bombard them with so much scripture that they get overloaded. Their, their, their system, like, just like, and they go deer in the headlights. That's the gentleness that he's referring to. Because, verse 25, in meekness. See, and I spare you, I've done this, up there. When the Lord gives you an opportunity, you speak the word through the scriptures, yes, because the Lord is in you, guiding you through the scriptures. But when you step up over that and go beyond that and just level a two and a half hour sermon on someone, when the Lord is like, give them, a, give them a morsel, that could lead to you being puffed up a little bit. Think about that. Hi, I've been there. 
I've done that to my shame. But it says in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, those of the world. If God peradventure will give them <laughs> belief to the acknowledging of the truth. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. And how does the devil do that? All this has been given unto me. And I, whoever I want to, I give it unto them. If thou therefore will worship me, all will be thine. Yeah. Thank your pardon. Now, go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Ah, uh, where was that? Where was that? One second, brethren. Sorry, brethren. I was looking right at it, okay? Second Timothy chapter 3. Oh, verses 10 on to verse 13. But thou, 2 Timothy 3, verses 10 on to verse 13. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life. Manner of life. You live what comes out of your mouth. You live according to the scriptures. Purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience. And remember... Charity is self-sacrifice. See, brethren, I'm, I'm hammering this upon you because the longer we go, the more important it is for us to live according to the Scriptures. You need to be reminded of that. I need to be reminded of that. That's why you are in the Scriptures daily. Okay? Daily. You should read more than just a proverb a day. You should. There are those out there who don't even do that. See, this book is alive. The Lord speaks to us, the church of the living God, through the scriptures. Okay? We need the book. We can't just go out there on our feelings, trusting that God knows our hearts. Yeah, he does. Yes, he does. We have a standard that we are to adhere to. And we need to check ourselves. I, I don't care if you get, Brad, you've talked about, I don't care. We need to remember this going forward. Because remember, brother, yeah, people's ears are want to be itched. Hearts are hardened. Okay? People, I don't want to hear what you got to say. You can witness by the way you will line your life up with the scripture, uh, scriptures. How many of us are doing that? Well, then get to it. Verses 10, verse 10 on verse 13. Let's read it, verse 10 again. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life. Doctrine, manner of life. Manner of life uh, centered around the doctrine. <gasps> Go figure that. Purpose, 
faith, long suffering, charity, patience. See, long suffering, patience, they're two different things, not one and the same. Okay? Persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured. But out of them all the Lord delivered me. That we trust in him, not ourselves. Our faith is on the Lord. Him. Not ourselves. Having faith in our faith. Remember, having faith in your faith it traces back onto metaphysical mind science. Uh, what, what is his name? Kenyon. Uh, Kenyon. Um, uh, Mary Baker Eddy. The Secret. All that stuff. Having faith in your faith. No, our faith is on the man, Christ Jesus. The perfect, sinless God. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Whether it's that big or it's that big. But <laughs> evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Deceiving others and deceiving them own, their own selves. Well, I believe, therefore I'm saved. Yeah, but you, you're, like, you're exactly like the world and there's no chastening. And you're attacking true people of the church of the living God, but yet you're saved. Because you believe, because you think you are. You're having faith on your faith. Yeah, you're a devil. You're a devil. Lord have mercy upon you. Times are getting hard, brethren. They really are. The doors are not closed. They're closing. Yes. And when you come across a point where you... Um, you know, if someone doesn't want to hear it uh, through, uh, you know, through the word, through those who are sent. What, what else is for you to do? Go lock yourself up in your house and hide and do like the devils do uh, constantly online. Being busybodies. But you do. Lock yourself up and wait. Do nothing. No, you be a testimony to them. Again, how you live your life according to the scripture. And I'm telling you, brethren. You ever, like I said, you, you ever been around somebody who you're just standing there getting something like uh, some cucumbers or whatever? Like, huh, huh. Hey, man, why is that? Why is that? See, because you have the Lord Jesus Christ living within you, and he doesn't. Jesus I know, and Paul I know. But who are ye? Are the devils aware of you? Go to 2 Kings. Go to 2 Kings. I don't know if I've covered this in a video before. I really don't. I don't watch my own videos. Um, I used to just, you know, put them on and, you know, kind of listen, but watch to make sure that there were no glitches in recording or in uploading because once before that has happened where uh, I uploaded something and the sound was like, you know, 
off or there were glitches. So um, that's the only kind of things I do with the videos that the Lord has done through me. I, I don't listen to my own stuff. But, um, so I don't know if I've touched on this before. But regardless, 2 Kings chapter 5. We will be reading verses 1 on to verse 19. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master, and honorable because by, the, by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captives out of the land of Israel, a little and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel, a little maid. And she waited on the man's wife. And she said unto her mistress, Would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed, and took with him ten talents of silver, and six thousand pieces of gold, and ten changes of raiment. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. Now look at verse 6, where he says, that thou, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. Saying that unto the king of Israel. When what does the little uh, maid say? Verse 3, And she said unto her mistress, Would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. But here in verse 6, I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. And it came to pass, when the king of Israel had read the letter, that he rent his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive that this man doth send unto me? to recover a man of his leprosy? Wherefore consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. Now, and in all respects here, <laughs> this king was like, what? what are you talking about? He's looking to start something with me. I can't do that. Let's continue. And it was so, when Elisha, the man of God had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes. Rent his clothes. Okay. A sign of like, whoa! Okay. That he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Naaman, what does it say in verse 1? Now Naaman, now Naaman, or Naaman, Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable, because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. So, Naaman had some favor, obviously, of the Lord. And 
what we're going to read, who who did this? Who is the one who benefited by what we are about to read here, continuing on to verse 19, okay? What are, who is the one who got the glory? Look at verse 8. The latter part of verse 8. Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha, Elisha himself never came out to him. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. Okay, number one. Elisha, again, himself, never went to him personally. And told him something very simple. Go wash in the Jordan. Seven times. And thy flesh shall come again, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. Something simple. Look at Naman's initial reaction. But Naman was wroth. That means angry. Very angry. And went away and said, Behold! Seekest thou great things for thyself? Looking for the bright lights, glamour, or whatever, the glaring thing to be used to the Lord? When actually it's a little bit more in the simple thing? Let's read. But Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought he would surely come out to me, which he didn't, and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Naaman was looking for something grandiose, some kind of shooey type of thing, if you will. Looking for the grandest thing, you know, something to come down from heaven. The lights, the glamour, look, ha, 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 you know. He was looking for this mighty thing. When actually the prophet's like, go wash in the Jordan seven times. And thy flesh shall come again to thee. And thou shalt be clean. Something simple. Something unprovocative. Yet provocative. Something unglamorous, yet glorious. You get what you get what I'm saying, don't you? I hope you do. Let's continue. Verse 12. Are not Abana and Parpar, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned away, so he turned and went away in a rage. Well, why can't I do this and be clean? Why can't I do I mean, look at that Jordan, that muddy pond. What, this? Nothing grandiose? You just want me to do this? Ah! You get it, right? Verse 13. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father. <laughs> okay. If the prophet had bid thee to do... Look at this. It it's being explained right here. If the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, Wouldst thou not have done it? That's what he was expecting. How much rather then, when he saith to thee, wash and be clean? Verse 
we all have different callings. Some do this, some tract, some are charitable. Okay? Seekest thou great things for thyself? Jeremiah chapter 45. Read that on your own time. Hopefully you can get through it in a reasonable amount of time because seeing it's only five verses. Okay? See, we're expecting when it comes to the Lord using us, we're expecting the... And, and, and amen, I get it. We're expecting to see great showmanship kind of things. What, what, what if you're sitting outside on a bench reading the scriptures and people walking by you and, and see you reading the scriptures? Who knows what that's going to, how the Lord is going to use that with the person who sees that, huh? Let's say the Lord opens up a door for you to witness unto someone. And people are passing by. Who knows how the Lord is going to use that conversation that you are having with another person with the onlookers who are walking about. See, you got to think of these things, brethren. Okay? You're, you being used as a witness does not simply pertain onto the one object that you think you're being sent onto. Does that make sense? You got to think about the others around or the circumstances as well. How the Lord may be working in that circumstance. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? People looking on when they when they slap tracks out of your hand and you're like back away with people looking onward. You're at work. Get a chance to witness, and it's like, dude, shut up. I don't want to hear that. Okay. And instead of combative, people are like, oh boy, that guy was just being, you know, being nice talking to that other guy. It's like, what what's What's about this guy with this guy who was telling this other guy who jumped on him? Sitting at a table, talking with someone. Passers-by, looking, go in, get what they got to get. They get into their car. It's like, huh, that guy was saying something about Jesus Christ in the scriptures. Who knows how the Lord is going to use that? But are, are, are you looking for the, you know, the lights, the glamour, the big thing? Let's continue. From verse 14. So, Naman, obviously. Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan according to the saying of the man of God and his flesh came again like and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child and he was clean and he returned to the man of God he and all his company he and all his company and came and stood before him and he said behold now I know that there is no God in all the earth, but in Israel. Now therefore I pray thee, take a blessing of thy servant. Now, over here in verse 8, the latter part, well let's read verse 8 again. And it, and it was so, when Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. And what that prophet in Israel said, who got the glory? Was it um, was it um, Elisha? 
and he and he returned to the man of God, he and all his company, and came and stood before him, and he said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. Now therefore I pray thee, take a blessing of thy servant. Hold your place here. Hold your place here. John. <laughs> John chapter 4. John chapter 4. Not 5, Brad. John chapter 4, verse 22. Ye, let's, let's read verses 21 unto verse 24. A little context. Thank you, part. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship. Our Lord Jesus Christ attributing himself unto his people. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. These are the people of Shem, not of Ham. Did you... For salvation is of the Jews. Shem. Shem's tent. Not Ham. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him, spirit and in truth. When you are saved, born again, truly converted, you are sealed unto the day of redemption. You are sealed with the Holy Ghost. Now, in this set of scriptures, that is a lowercase s. And in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. Again, you're not using the scriptures. Uh, does it say God is spirit? God is a spirit. Again, distinction. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit, lowercase s, and in truth. What kind of spirit? are those who are easy believism. They are of the world, therefore the world heareth them. They are of the devil, okay? And they speak lies. Let's continue. Where did we leave off in 2 Kings? Ah, uh, yes. Verse 15 again. And he returned to the man of God, he and all his company, and came, and stood before him. And he said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. Now therefore, I pray thee, take a blessing of thy servant. But he said, As the Lord liveth, before whom I stand, I will receive none. And he urged him, to take it, but he refused. And Naaman said, Shall there not then, I pray thee, be given to thy servant two mules' burden of earth? For thy servant will henceforth offer neither burnt offering nor sacrifice unto other gods, but unto the Lord. Uh, yeah, Naaman was made a convert. Yeah. Naman the Syrian, he's up there, I truly believe. We'll see him when we get redeemed. Okay? We'll see Naman the Syrian. Okay? 
In this thing the Lord pardon thy servant, that when my master goeth into the house of Ramon to worship there, and he leaneth on my hand, and I bow myself in the house of Ramon, when I bow down myself in the house of Ramon, the Lord pardon thy servant in this thing. And he said unto him, Go in peace. So he departed from him a little way. Who was glorified? The Lord. By the seeming most insignificant little thing, when Naaman was looking for the big grandiose thing, right? You don't know how the Lord is using you in certain things. You don't know. You don't know that something you said in conversation with onlookers, you don't know how the Lord has taken what you have said, Church of the Living God, and used that in other people. You don't know. You don't know. There are more chances to witness than just merely faith cometh by hearing. Amen. We looked at that to start. Amen. But how you align and adhere your life to the scriptures outside there and within the four walls. There's more to it. There, brethren. There's more to it. Don't be discouraged. And don't retreat back. Please. Please. You know, if you have been called to this kind of stuff online, um, I know of uh, those who uh, have a gift for research, okay, and share, and praise the Lord, sharing that information with anyone who will see, okay, praise the Lord for that, by the way, okay? We just have to uh, be a little bit more creative. <laughs> and also remember brethren remember if one person spirit's own body if one person is affected in the Lord by anything that he will use you for you have your fruit You know, Brad, you you spend a lot of time in that in that book. You need to you need to close the book and get out there. Uh, <laughs> there's that saying: if um, if someone goes about to search for the perfect uh, uh, rose blossom, the perfect rose blossom, one that is perfectly shaped, and you spend your whole life looking for that, it won't be a wasted life. I say, you spend the entirety of your life in the scriptures, serving our Lord Jesus Christ. Whether he use you to speak a word or to carry your garbage from one place to the other and doing it all for the glory of God, anything you do, anything you do do to the glory of God that don't mean sin you devils no because remember we're supposed to live according to this take be encouraged brethren because like I said you don't know how the Lord is using whatever you don't know. So take courage. And be encouraged over that. 
Okay? You don't know how the Lord's using you, brother. Sister. And if you have some inkling of how he is, consider yourself. Beware. Remember, in meekness. Okay? So, that uh, this has been a, uh, this was something that, um, stemming off of uh, a little bit of an email, but also the Lord this morning was just showing me this, 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 this. Like, wow. <laughs> so, very impromptu, and I wanted to share this with you. So, thank you so much for watching this if you do. We love you so very much, brothers and sisters, Church of the Living God. We're praying for so many of you. Again, brethren, thank you for the prayers about my wife and her feet. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Lord has answered prayer. And uh, please continue to keep us in your prayers. Um, don't really know how the moving thing is going yet. But we do trust that no matter what happens, Lord will provide. And we are we are a testimony, a testament to that. So thank you, brethren. And uh, also too very quickly, uh, thank you to my two brothers for their loving rebukes that they have given. Uh, thank you. And we love you. We love you. Thank you so much for watching if you do, and we will see you in the next video, okay?